There's been a great deal of a discussion on the internet about post-processing 3D printed mouthpieces. So many saxophone players today are creating their own mouthpieces by 3D printing them and there are plenty of free files to be had online. So if you are interested in learning how to sand and polish your prints, let me demonstrate the best practices I use every day in my factory to finish ABS, PLA and our new metal line we call Metallica. Metallica is actually granulated metal powders converted to a filament that prints real brass, real copper, and real steel. And it weighs three and a half times more than the normal filament you would get when you print a 3D mouthpiece from ABS or PLA. Hand sanding and polishing, as far as I'm concerned, is the only alternative to create a beautiful, durable, great playing mouthpiece. Hello, my name is Gary Sugal, and I've been manufacturing CNC metal saxophone mouthpieces since 1988. Over the past 35 years, more than 27,685 CNC mouthpieces have been sold to students, educators, and recording artists located in every part of the globe. And I'm proud to say that every one of those pieces was hand finished by me. Before we get started, let me fill you in on how I became involved with 3D printed mouthpieces. In 2014, I was the first manufacturer to produce 3D printed mouthpieces, and in 2017, I introduced a few models at the NAMM show out in Anaheim, California. While we are historically known for manufacturing high-end custom CNC metal mouthpieces, ranging in price from $600 to $1,200 each, only a few of the 3D printed pieces were sold. However, when the pandemic hit in March of 2020, I was forced to send my employees home and decided to take my computer, my sax, my 3D printer, a program called SolidWorks, which is a CAD program, and my wife up to Maine to quarantine at my daughter's home. There I spent 12 hours a day creating 26 new models and more than 400 STL files. STL files of every size imaginable. I was able to replicate every one of my CNC metal mouthpiece models. This included altos, tenor, soprano, and baritone, as well as clarinet mouthpieces. Then in 2020 and 21, I sent out quite a few samples to uh, online educators and professionals for review. Here are some of the responses we received of those first generation. G'day, it's Nigel Lee from Sax School. Gary Sugal sent me a whole bunch of mouthpieces but the ones that I'm going to focus on today are the KW1 Turbo, uh, which I guess is like their Kirk Whalen model, and the MB1 Turbo, which I guess, again, is their Michael Brecker. He's been around for a long time. Gary's been making mouthpieces since the 80s, and he has manufactured pieces for people like Joe Bagonzi, Michael Brecker, Kirk Whalen, and in fact, most of his mouthpieces that I've always come across in the past have been CNC machine mouthpieces. So what Gary has done is recreated the shape of his already proven CNC mouthpieces is metal mouth in a 3D format. So what we get then is a mouthpiece that actually looks more like a metal mouthpiece. But after a few minutes of playing, it really did start to feel comfortable. Pieces play really, really well. Now Gary really knows his stuff. He's a saxophone player, but he's also got background in jewelry manufacture, so he knows how to do fine detail. And these models that he sent me are actually prototypes. Uh, lovely finished off as you'd imagine they would be coming from. They've all got very different sounds, I have to say, but the response on all of them is is really, really great. So this is the Michael Brecker One Turbo. It's got a really bright, full sound, but the Altissimo is really, really good.
but uh uh, Gary made me a uh, custom mouthpiece, a CNC mouthpiece, and this is a great mouthpiece. Uh, I will tell you that these play as good as this mouthpiece. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to be reviewing Gary Sugal's brand new 3D Metallic Yeti 7-star mouthpiece for tenor saxophone. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. It's really exciting. I'm going to read this. Um, this is a note that Gary sent me with what was involved with this. So this is produced from refined copper brass tin shavings. Our proprietary food safe metal filament is a true first in the industry to produce real 3D metallic mouthpieces, okay? Now, this isn't the only one, although I do have the first one in the world when it comes to the Yeti, but there are, uh, there's also the 3D metal Supergons and the MB2. And those mouthpieces have um, fluted sidewalls and step enhancers in those. This mouthpiece is heavier than the MB2 3D um, printed uh, turbo that I reviewed. This is not metallic, so this is much lighter compared to this one. It has more substance to it, uh, to the way it feels. But what I found was um, the tone was even throughout, you know, the entire uh, range of the horn. So even from really low to into the altissimo, um, it felt really even, it felt really efficient to blow through. All right, so I really like the feel of this Yeti mouthpiece. It feels really good, um, it's solid, and it definitely is, I'll take the ligature off this one, it's definitely substantially, uh, not very heavy, but you could definitely feel a difference in the weight. Hi, my name's Greg Abate, and I I wanted to say a little bit more about Gary Segal. He's been my friend for 30 years and I played in this band and he makes these wonderful mouthpieces but he designed these 3D mouthpieces for people that don't really like playing a metal mouthpiece but you can get sort of the same feel from this as you can with a metal mouthpiece. <laughs> first generation, I mean, when the mouthpiece comes off the 3D printer, it plays great and it looks beautiful. But the fact of the matter is most 3D manufacturers of mouthpieces never did any post-processing. And upon close observation, you can see the printed layer lines. We're also guilty of this. Anyway, what you're about to see is what I regard as our second generation of 3D printed mouthpieces in which a great deal of hand finishing now goes into every piece. I can assure you that quality is never ever compromised. Please hit the like and subscribe button. I'll also add you to our once a month drawing in which I will be giving away three mouthpieces every month up until March 25th of 2022. So let's get started. By the way, at the end of this video, I will compare my favorite and personal 18 karat CNC tenor mouthpiece that I've had for years to the Yeti, which is the mouthpiece I will be demonstrating in this video. The first thing we want to do once the uh, mouthpieces have been printed is remove them from the uh, plate. Once removed from the plate, we need to remove the excess material. We use a sharp knife and you can see we need to do a little bit of trimming. Once we trim the outside of the mouthpiece, we need to put a small bevel on the inside so it does not cut the cork. So far, we removed the uh, mouthpieces from the glass plate. We've trimmed the outside barrel and we also created a slight bevel on the inside. Once we have trimmed the uh, barrel, 
and created a bevel. What I like to do is repair the mouthpiece to insert a bite plate. Most of you who are familiar with my mouthpieces know that I use a blue acrylic material. I like to do this because when I'm working on sanding, I'm able to smooth the surface of the bite plate with the tip or the rim so everything is even. Once I insert the bite plate into the cavity of the mouthpiece, it is now ready to be annealed. Here I am placing the uh, mouthpieces into a small oven to be annealed. So once the pieces are annealed, they are now ready to be sanded and polished. I use eight different grits of paper, water, and some other materials. To start, I'm going to use 80 grit and the purpose of that is to remove of the layer lines. You can see that I am sanding down the material, even out the layer lines. I'm doing number two mouthpiece. Uh, still, I'm using 80 grit. Uh, and I'm going to time it for you to tell you approximately how long each piece takes to do. Now approximately 5 after 12. The last thing that I do is I work on the table, the flat surface. This is the second piece, only 80 grit. I will use 120, 240, 400, and 600 to get the initial layer lines flat and even. And I will show you the next step. And I like to even out the surface with the blue bite plate. And I smooth over the edge so that your lip does not get irritated or cut from the edges. I will not um, touch the table until the very last operation. And the final steps of grit 80 and let's see how long that process took. took about 8 to 10 minutes to uh, just do operation of 80 grit. Okay, well, just about done with number 5. This will, these five pieces will be ready for the second operation, which is using grit number 120. By the way, you can see there's quite a bit of dust that has been accumulated, so I strongly suggest you uh, wear a face mask. When I started, it was approximately 5 after 12. It is now about 12.30. I am using grit number 120 to do all five pieces. This is number three, mouthpiece. This is number four, and we move on to number five, grit number 120. We're gonna move on to grit number 240. It's now a quarter to one, and I'm starting on this third stage. Those of you who plan on doing your own sanding and polishing of your printed mouthpiece, I found this to be the best technique, rather than use alcohol or acetone. And I would estimate about 10 minutes to do the five pieces just on that one operation. So if you look close, you can still see layer lines on the table. I'm not addressing that at this point, if uh, you guys are wondering why I don't use alcohol or acetone to smooth out the mouthpiece, it's because I do not want to lose any dimensions on the table. I suppose this mouthpiece, it's a replica of my KW and made some minor adjustment and we call it the Yeti. That's the final stages of number three. Now we go to number four. Number four is uh, 400 grit is going to refine further. The uh, layer lines uh, estimated time will be probably eight to 10 minutes. So we can take a peek right now and see what our expected piece will look like. I'll just use a drop of water. The water lets me see if I missed any lines and how my surfaces are coming out. We are going to now start using 600 grit. Here I take a dab of the uh, water, I just put it on surface of the mouthpiece and I will do the five mouthpieces for you. That's the first mouthpiece. You do the same thing to the second and each one of these takes about two or three minutes maybe. When we come back we will use 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500. We're going to use 1,000. Dampen the mouthpiece a little bit. I'm just using water. No chemicals. This is just all water. Again. Yeah. 
I'm starting to see a bit of a sheen. So this is number four. Once again, I am spending about three minutes on each piece. And we're still on 1,000 grit. Next, we go to 1,500 grit. Now on the fifth piece, using 1,500 grit. I'm using 2,000 grit on the fourth mouthpiece and the fifth mouthpiece. Same thing. I now use a wet sandpaper 2,500 grit on each of the mouthpieces. This is 2,500 grit and the fifth mouthpiece. Curious to see what 3,000 looks like. I'm using 3,000 grit. I don't find it necessary to use but some of you may want to try it. Let's give you a quick demo of grit number 5,000. I'm just set, I'm going to stay with number one. So it has 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, and 5,000 sanding done to it. 5,000. That completes the section one and section two of sanding. We have not done the table. In the next section, I will show you how I do the table of the mouthpiece. In this uh, phase of preparing the mouthpiece, we are going to now sand the table, clean it up a bit, so it is going to be perfect. First thing I use is a 600 grit sandpaper, which what this is right here. That's smooth. Now what I like to do is I will use 240 and 400 sandpaper on the table and I will smooth that out. For the sake of uh, time, I'm going to just do one or two mouthpieces. Here I'm using a file and I put these uh, 240 sandpaper on the piece. Now I will do this to all five mouthpieces and you can see here three quarter needle file and I work the tips. Now we use 400 grit to sand the surface of the mouthpiece. I just put a little water on the surface to make sure I don't have any lines. Number five. Again, with the needle file, on the tip is what we call a mop, the jeweler's mop. What we do is give the mouthpiece a, a quick uh, cleanup to get rid of any dust and dirt that's on the piece. What I end up doing is I do check the a table to make sure that it's straight and that I didn't lose any of the dimensions when I worked on the table. And I use five different feeler gauges. So the first feeler gauge was this is 0015, this is 0110, the next one I use is 024. And finally the last feeler gauge I use is 034. Everything seems to be straight and we move on to the final step of coating the mouthpiece. In order to uh, bring out the shine and seal it permanently, I use a proprietary solution of food grade mineral oil and they use it on the wood trays that go into uh, pizza ovens. And sometimes I do a two coats. So I'm working on the fourth mouthpiece and uh, it may even taste like lemon oil. Some people like it. I will tell you this, that I do spray the material with uh, Bach hygienic mouthwash cleaner after I play test the mouthpiece. So what you've seen today is uh, actually uh, well, most, if not all the processes, I go through to send out these uh, custom-made 3D metallic mouthpieces. I do also do the same process on the composites, the regular filament that we use. Uh, some use PLA and some use ABS. I can tell you that these processes will work on that material. So if you're printing ABS or PLA, I can tell you that it will work. So once these pieces are dry, I will come back and re-coat them again with the uh, food grade mineral oil. So here you have it, five mouthpieces 
that I uh, demonstrated how to sand, buff, and polish. In any case, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I want to share with you the processes that I go through. Hello again. Well, if you made it this far watching my video on how to post-process 3D printed saxophone mouthpieces, I'm also hoping you're interested in hearing what the Yeti sounds like compared to my all-time favorite metal CNC 18 karat heavy gold KW2 tenor mouthpiece. I also use this KW2 metal as a barometer to compare custom-made mouthpiece orders to. The Yeti is from one of the five pieces I finished in the video. The four other pieces I finished were orders and have been sold. By the way, the reed that I am using, it's Harry Hartman fiber reed, and it is carbon fiber. And I have to tell you, I love them. So here we go.